A few minutes before church service started, the townspeople were sitting in their pews and talking. Suddenly, Satan appeared at the front of the church. Everyone started screaming and running for the front entrance, trampling over each other in a frantic effort to get away from the evil incarnate. Soon, everyone had exited the church except for one elderly man who sat calmly in the pew without moving, seeming obvious, oblivious to the fact that God's ultimate enemy was in his presence. So Satan walked up to the old man and said, don't you know who I am? The man replied, yep, sure do. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of me, Satan asked. Nope, sure ain't, said the man. Don't you realize I could kill you with a word, asked Satan? Don't doubt it for a minute. Did you know I could cause you profound, horrifying, physical agony, agony, agony for all eternity, persisted Satan? Yep. And you're still not afraid, asked Satan? Nope. More than a little perturbed, Satan asked, well, why aren't you afraid of me? The man replied, been married to your sister for 48 years. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> I know this is hilarious. <laughs> but in this teaching, we don't blame the devil or anything outside of ourselves. <laughs> Last week when Dr. Mark talked about heaven, it was wonderful because it gave me a memory. And he said, heaven is within. It sparked a memory for me of when I was a child growing up. Every time I saw a falling star or made a birthday wish, I always made the same wish, to be happy. But I didn't realize that it's not like snapping your fingers or just saying it would create it. I have some responsibility in creating an atmosphere and a mindset for my happiness to flourish. I now realize that there are things that I needed to do and let go of to have this euphoric mental and emotional state. This year, 2020, offers us a fresh opportunity, an opportunity to shift our perspective. <laughs> we can let go of the weight of the past, like fear, worry, old grudges, grievances, and inaction. These stifle our growth and happiness, and they block us from expressing our true essence or divine nature. Gandhi said, happiness is when you think what, and what you say and what you do are in harmony. Ask yourself, what is it that you need to kick to the curb to be happy? Or whom do you need to kick to the curb? <laughs> like the kids say, there might be somebody you need to ask to kick rocks. But it could be just an attitude that you're carrying that needs healing and attention. Could it be fear, jealousy, grief, resentment, or self-loathing? Don't let fear hold you hostage. In order to release fear, shame, guilt, and those types of feelings, you must shine the light on them. Someone once said, on your deathbed, you don't want to be kicking yourself for not having completed your bucket list. Research shows that holding on to a grudge or anger for longer than necessary can be toxic, and especially on your physical health and well-being. Right now is the perfect opportunity to work on letting go of some old baggage by either working on or keeping or repairing a strained relationship or closing the chapter 
on that relationship that cannot be salvaged. You can decide whether you've grown distant or you no longer envision them as a healthy part of your life. You can either choose to move forward or let go. You can say goodbye to a relationship, and it can be tough at first, but the closure can also be very freeing. Or maybe you're a worrier. Do you worry, especially about things you can't control? I know it's a challenge to give up worry and stress entirely. These feelings are a normal part of life. But in this teaching, we learn that we can change our thinking and change our lives. Brian Tracy has a great book called Change Your Thinking and Change Your Life. And this rings true today. He says, and I quote, our actions are the practical manifestations of our thought. Refrain from negative affirmations like, I can't do this, or it's quite difficult, and replace it with, I will, I'm going to, or I can. Positive affirmations are like mantras. They have a sacred and spiritual force about them. Don't keep mulling over misfortunes. Maybe it was a failed business. Maybe it was a loss of a great job that you liked. Maybe you got laid off. Maybe it was a relationship or perceived wrongs committed by those that you love. Don't keep asking yourself, what would have happened if you had done this or that? Or what would happen if I do this in the future? The only thing we have control over is the eternal moment of now. And if we shift our thinking to have a positive attitude of gratitude, we begin to count our blessings. Counting our joys and blessings is vital. Most people take their joys and blessings for granted and start grumbling about what they don't have. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. You may remember the story in the Bible about Jesus the Christ who blessed the food and turned two fishes and five loaves of bread into enough to feed the multitudes. Appreciate the joy of what you have. This is not to suggest that you should not aspire to have a better life. Enjoy whatever amount of success you have achieved instead of feeling sad about what you have not been able to achieve. We can always set higher standards and benchmarks or goals, but failure to reach them should not spoil our enjoyment of what God has already blessed us with. And that brings me to another subject. In this era of social media, it seems that, to appear anyway, that everyone is living their best life. <laughs> that is, except us. <laughs> we must remind ourselves that social media is a highlight reel. Don't compare your daily life to a single picture capturing a perfect moment. This is not the best use of your time. Instead, research shows that engaging with people you admire, rather than spending so many hours a week scrolling mindlessly on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, you can connect to people that you admire, send them a direct message on social media and ask for advice. Seek out a mentorship rather than be a jealous onlooker. Another thing we can let go of in 2020 is being concerned or worried about what people think of us. Remember Reverend Terry Cole Whitaker's book, 
What you think about me is none of my business. That was a great book. And what other people think of us is none of our business. It's important to know what our values are and be grounded in them so that we are not swayed by the thoughts of others. So what if they don't like you? What happens next? The answer is nothing. The world does not end if somebody doesn't like you. We're not going to be liked by everyone. We must learn to stick to our core group of supporters who truly love and respect us and not spend time worrying about the people who don't quite get us. Ask yourself, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? We have all strived to win arguments. However, that can cause more stress than it's worth. Let go of the need to win. It takes enormous energy because people tend to want to be right too. How many times do we fight with someone and we're simply fighting to be right? We say things that we can't take back or later we regret things that we've said. I overreacted or we fought over something so stupid and trivial. Sometimes we don't even remember why we fought in the first place. Sometimes the trivial thing we get stuck on are just a smaller manifestation of a larger underlying issue. So let go of the need to be right and put your focus on a solution. This will increase your joy. It takes work. In this day and age, there's an app for everything, but there is no app for happiness. <laughs> Dr. Mark spoke of this last week. He quotes Ernest Holmes. The kingdom of heaven is available to the degree that we become conscious of it. The kingdom of heaven is within. So we choose. We have choice. We can choose our perspective every moment. We can choose to be in heaven by seeing our life as whole and perfect right now. We have to watch our thinking. Is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? We get to choose. Attaining happiness is a global pursuit. People in every corner of the world rate happiness more important than any other desirable outcomes, such as wealth, acquiring material goods. And at some point in our lives, we realize that we can't buy it. Relationships can't give it to us, or we can't travel to it. It's not outside, it's inside. Ernest Holmes also says, happiness is a state of well-being or enjoyment of good of any kind. We have a right to any happiness of which we can conceive, provided that happiness hurts no one and is in keeping with the nature of progressive life. <laughs> there are two more things I want to mention before I go. And there's one that is very difficult, and I know because I've experienced it, and it's grief. It's normal. My son made his transition in 2013, and I still experience waves of grief. But if we hold on to chronic acute grief, it can lead us to a variety of physical and mental and emotional issues, such as depression, trouble sleeping, feelings of anger and bitterness, anxiety, loss of appetite, and general aches and pains. Everyone deals with it differently. Open up and talk about it when you're ready. Allow friends to be there for you. Put down the drink and pick up the phone and call a friend for professional help. The world is still beautiful. 
and positive and inspiring. So do what you love, set some new goals, and build a plan to make your dreams become a reality. The other is letting go of the need to be so masochistic. Often, we wallow in our misery, being gloomy and pessimistic. These thoughts can cause harmful impacts on the mind as well as the physical body. Yet again, we're negatively affirming, nothing good will ever occur, <clears throat> I'm not deserving, or I'm not good enough at anything, or woe is me. When you wake up in the morning, resolve to stay happy during the day. Spend time with the flowers and plants and nature. Listen to a song of the birds in the trees. Watch them flying high in the sky. Go for a walk among nature. Go to a park nearby or a beach and let the sand go between your toes. Remember to remain calm and at peace, even when a storm is coming. Subscribe to inspirational literature. Meditate daily. Focus on changing yourself instead of changing the world around you. Wayne Dyer said, we must never underestimate your power to change yourself. And you can do this by being an example to others. Gandhi said, be the change you wish to be in the world. You wish to see in the world. Be it. Do you believe that your thoughts have power to transform your life? What do you believe stands between you and complete happiness? Is it your thoughts? Or are you blaming someone else for your lack of happiness? Before I go, I'd like to list a few things that are symptoms of the happy person. The happy person is not enamored with fancy material goods or luxury vacations. A happy person is fine with simple pleasures like petting a dog or a cat. Don't leave the cats out. Sitting under a tree, enjoying a cup of tea. And these are some of the symptoms of the happiest people. They do not feel entitled and have fewer expectations. They do not hold grudges. They are not spiteful or insulting. They're open to new things. They exercise self-care. They smile and laugh readily. They go with the flow. They do not play games. They practice compassion. They're not martyrs or victims. They're always grateful, and they're happy for other people. They have a healthy support system, and they live with purpose. So let's embrace the idea that the state of happiness can be achieved through our own thinking and actions. In this teaching, we have so many tools. We have classes. We, we teach meditation, affirmations to help us live our best self. You are the master of your destiny. So I encourage you to sign up. You will change your thoughts and change your life. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray, please. Turning within to the true essence of who we are. <clears throat> that place of where peace resides. That place of all knowing. That place that gives us the ability to discern and decide our well-being in the world of effects. That place where we know that life is not merely a game of chance. It's ours to shape and mold. 
We know that our thinking creates and the words that we speak are the law of our lives. Therefore, we choose thoughts of peace and poise and compassion. And we speak words of kindness and inspiration, choosing to uplift those around us. We choose relationships that support us and we support those we love. We affirm that happiness comes from within and not outside of us. We bless all families and friends and we bless all paths to God. Mosques, ashrams, churches and institutions of light. We are so grateful for the knowledge that the light of God is within each of us and not without. And that we are all connected on the seen and unseen side of life. For this and the greater yet to be, I give thanks. And so it is. And together we say, Amen.